The Guy, Sharon and Clint podcast. Talofa Lava, people of the internet. Welcome to the Guy, Sharon and Clint podcast. And thank you for joining us. We've got a couple of dedications to make tonight. Dedications on the podcast. The first one goes to Sophie Tran, who lives in Auckland. She says, I know I live in Auckland, but give me a shout out anyway. God. Um, <laughs> then we got a really good uh, one that came all the way from Poplar Bluff, Missouri in the USA. What? This comes from Josh Cheeseman and I want, or Cheeseman, I hope I said that right either way. Um, I want to It is Cheeseman. It. I was going to do that one. Too. I'm going to read it to you. You ready? He goes, Hey guys, I download your podcast whenever I can from Poplar Bluff, Missouri, in the US. I'm on a five month student exchange and listening to you guys makes me feel a lot less homesick. Aww. Uh, I tried to get a shout out from Guy, but I'm pretty sure he doesn't understand the concept of shout outs. <laughs> <laughs> I also want to do a big shout out to my mum, Claire, and my brother, Sam, who and everyone I know that gets the podcast at home. So can you do a shout out? Do a shout out for, for Josh. Guy. Sh- sh- shout out, Josh. Josh, shout out. Holla. Here's a podcast. Guy, Sharon, and Clint on the edge. It's your matchmaking gone wrong. I want to know from people, and you can call us. Do we have a phone line here? Yes, it's we, We've got a phone number. We, yeah. We've organised a phone for today, so people can call <laughs> in and ask us about things. Mm-hmm. Because Sharon, I don't think anyone can probably top Sharon. Whoa! Sharon had some friends, two mutual friends, that she wanted to hook up. She wanted to be Cupid on. Am I right, Sharon? Yeah. But you, but you I, knew both of them? I did. know them both really well. And you put them together. Yes, and they had a great relationship for a while. And it was a great relationship. How long did they last? Um, I don't know. A couple About six of, months? A couple of years. A couple of years? Yeah. A couple of years. The one problem with Sharon's excellent matchmaking job that she did is that the dude she set up with this girl, the dude... Turned out to be gay. This is not my fault, by the way, because <laughs> I had no idea. Because I I had dated this guy before, and I had no idea about this. You dated him as well. Yeah, and he, <laughs> he wasn't gay then. So you hooked up your friend. You go, I've got a dream guy for you. He's perfect. One small problem, though. He's not into girls. <laughs> Well, this, Dear is, this, is, this is the one time it's gone wrong for me. And how was I supposed to know that he... W- so many guys are snappy dresses these days. I didn't gaydar. see the signs. Did you and have your gaydar turned on? I usually have great gaydar. And also, how... Run it, d- run it over guy. <laughs> <laughs> it just got real confused. <laughs> it's, um, how does the guy feel as well that he's been hooked up? You're supposed to hook a gay guy with other dudes, in yeah. case you didn't notice. He's got to date a girl... You've done a great job, except for the problem of basic sexual orientation. That's where you went wrong. Oh, I, I had no idea that, that it was going to turn out this way. He didn't, he never told me. He didn't tell me for ages. Uh, this so, would have happened before, though. This would be relatively common. Yeah. I'm sure yeah. I'm not the only person that has ever had a bad matchmaking experience. <laughs> Surely not. Well, give us a call then. Let's see if we get any calls on this. I reckon yeah, you won't be alone. I hope not. What please. if you set someone up with someone who turned out to be like um, uh, uh, oh, a weirdo? Like a, uh, someone that has a creepy porcelain doll uh, obsession. <laughs> and you, and they, took you, they took you home and then you're like, whoa, look at all these dolls staring at us. <laughs> yeah, or just a complete psychopath. Give us a call on 0800 The Edge or text us to 3343. Get in touch with your bad matchmaking skills. Someone Texas, I turned him gay. I did not. Shush. <laughs> yeah. I'm a great. I am a great pash. Sarah, tell us about your bl- uh, matchmaking gone wrong. I got match made with my cousin. <gasps> wow. What? How, how did you? How did this? Like first cousin? Yeah, first cousin. <laughs> like, like used to have baths together and share a bed, cousin. Yeah. I'm sorry. Do you guys do that with your cousins, eh? No, nobody else does that. Sarah, did you get set up by your parents, or like, how did this happen? No, my friend met him through uni, and they were like a study group together, and then I was complaining how I'm sick of being single. She's like, oh, I've got the perfect guy in my study group. You know, well, I'll set him up at a bar, and we'll go and meet him tonight. He even looks a little bit like you. (laughs) (laughs) And I walked in there, and I was like, oh, hey, there's my cousin. And she's like, where? And I pointed out, she's like, oh, no, you're kidding me, right? I was like, no, why? She's like, that's your date. I'm like, oh, Well, thank, oh, thank God, oh, Sarah. Oh, no. Um, did you follow through with the date? Pardon? Did you, no, no, don't, don't worry. <laughs> uh, just thank God you knew it was your cousin when you saw him, and it wasn't like some second cousin that you went home with and found out the next day. Stars, tell us about your bad matchmaking. Um, well, my flatmate was living with me, complaining about how she didn't have anyone to go out with, and... My friend went out with her for a little bit and turns out she had chlamydia. 
Oh. 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 Now, yeah, that definitely beats my matchmaking stars. You can't, you can't test that, though, eh? You can't go, hey, you'd be perfect, my friend. By the way, do you have any STDs? <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm going to ask if I set you up with anyone. Stacey, what's your bad matchmaking? Um, I, one of my guy friends reckoned his brother would be perfect for one of my friends. So yeah. I um, had a party and invited heaps of people around and thought, oh, yeah, this is perfect. And then turns out the brother was totally into me and we hooked up. Oh! oh. You were an Indian giver matchmaker. I know, it was terrible. <laughs> That is so bad. And we've got one last one on the line now. Lenora, hello. Hello. So you've got another one like that first one where um, it was the cousin that, that was the matchmaking happening. So we've already yes. had that. So we want you to go with the backup story that you told us. <laughs> the biggest story. The one, you told wow. us, the one you said was probably a bit dangerous. Let's go oh, with that okay. one. Oh, okay. This, this one's interesting. So mm. the story is that um, I, I know someone, a certain cousin, who uh, got set up on a date, mm-hmm. and then she went up going out for a little bit. And they thought it was quite funny that um, they were both going to a family reunion on the same weekend, <gasps> until they both turned up to the same family reunion. Ah! <laughs> and what was it? Not first cousins. I think it was kind of more like, I don't know, second. Sli- oh, I hope oh. like second or third cousins. You're still, still close either- enough to have extra fingers <laughs> on their children. Either way, if you climbed high enough up at the family tree, you'd end up on the same branch. <laughs> Well, basically, but um, basically, I mean, I'm Filipino. Well, I shouldn't have said that on the radio. But um, me and my sisters are both with poor white dudes, so it's probably for a reason. Yeah, yeah it's a good thing, eh? You've played it safe on that one, Lenora. <laughs> Thank you disgusting. so much. Um, How upset would you be? Because what if you're already in love with the person? I'm so glad I don't have very many boy cousins. <laughs> I, I have this theory. The reason people have, you know how you meet dudes who have Asian fetishes or people are turned on by like foreign accents? Yeah. I think that's like the natural human reaction, the way... To get you as far away from your cousins uh, as possible. Okay. Because I'm from Nelson and everyone's way too close down there. Right? <laughs> Guy, Sharon, and Clint on the urge. Today on Guy's Travel Guy, Guide to Travel. Why did I come up with such a convoluted name for the segment? I don't know. I don't know. I've just always wanted my name to be useful for something and I'm just trying to hammer into things and it's not really working. Guy's Travel Guy, Guide to Travel. That's the full name. <laughs> Today I'm going to um, today I'm going to uh, Wellington, which is New Zealand's capital. Yes, and where I studied at university. Wow, Sharon, are you not a fan of Wellington? No, I like Wellington. I lived there for a long time. Oh yeah, of course. You're from uh, from Porirua. Porirua. That's what, what I do when I'm gangster. Does Porirua have its own mayor? Uh, yeah, because it's a separate city. So you're not from Wellington. Well, I lived in Wellington, but I was born in Porirua. But I spent most of my time. Don't get it complicated, mate. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite a. Um, it's pretty much Wellington. It's quite a, um, a, a history of uh, of Sharon's travel that we can get into another time. Yeah, Por- sometimes I go to Porro. Sometimes Porro is the place that they had a um, had a had a had a city councillor who was um, stealing money from the gym. <laughs> <laughs> they had to they had to fire him. The, the city councillor who's in charge of the city because he was stealing money out of like the the tip donation box. That's a story for another time. So, <laughs> <laughs> That'll be in guys travel guide guide to, to Porro. Oh, can you? Do Porirua next week since you've done Wellington this week? I've never actually been to Porirua, so I can't talk about it. But oh. I'll go when I go there. We're going there in a couple of weeks, so I'll stop in Porirua I'll and then I'll have you, some I'll, cool stories. I'll take you for a tour. Oh, that's a, that's a, we could do a live one if anything. Okay, so today I'm doing Wellington. Yeah, let's check it out. Hi, and welcome to Guy the Travel Guy's Guide to Travel. I'm Guy Williams. You might remember me as the unidentified Caucasian male around two metres in height, last seen outside the BP petrol station in Huntley, now wanted by police. Today on Guy's Travel Guy Guide, we're going to Wellington, New Zealand's capital. Affectionately known as Windy Wellington since the 1970s, when using derogatory alliteration was seen as a harmless gaffe. Other cities have since dropped the cheeky nickname, including Asshole Auckland and Herpes Hamilton. A classic gag, but I digress. Wellington is the largest capital capital city in New Zealand, with more people who think they're better than you than anywhere else in the country. Wellington is often described as a cultural melting pot, after alternative artist Percy Morgan was arrested for taking one person from every culture and attempting to melt them in a pot. So come on, let's go check out this vibrant city that could also be described as diverse and vibrant by boring people. Ah, the Bucket Fountain, an iconic local icon, which was the first fountain to harness powerful bucket technology. This was designed by Burren and Keane and erected <laughs> in 1969. <laughs> the fountain was subsequently filled with bubbles in 1969, 1970, 1971 and every year up until now. 
Of course, no trip to Wellington is complete without a trip up the iconic cable car. It's called a cable car because it sounded better than iconic bus tied to a rope. Finally, the world famous... <coughs> the New Zealand famous... Finally, the known to most people in the Lower North Island... Te Papa, New Zealand's National Museum and home of a massive giant squid in a box. It's f***ing mint. Te Papa is also home to some of the world's finest travelling art displays, including Monet and the Impressionists. It was basically a bunch of old geezers who did some paintings of stuff because they were too poor to be able to afford a camera. Time for my hot travel tip. The good people at Wellington Airport Security do not like it if you go, yes, when you get through the metal detectors without them beeping. That's all for Guy's Travel Guy Guide to Travel this week. We'll see you next week. Ka kite ano. <laughs> that, that is a really good point. People will hate it when you do that. Guy, Sharon and Clint. On the edge. Selfies are becoming a massive health risk. And it's been, especially in America, they have noticed a rise in head lice from people taking selfies. What? And usually it's people at like early primary school and sometimes intermediate that are getting head lice. But now it's getting more and more common with teenagers because they're constantly sticking their heads together so that the lice can jump from one head to the other or just the eggs or whatever. And it's getting in each other's hair because they're getting selfies so close to each other all the time. You ask us to take selfies like that with you all the time. I you're know. Like, I don't have head lice, like, though, get in, here, get in here. Do some duck face. <laughs> and then we do. And then, have you got head lice? I don't know. I do have an itchy head. Have you got any? You might have got that nah, from me. Nah, just kidding. You oh. might have got it from me. Well, have you got head lice? <laughs> yep. Well, no, it could happen. No. So they're, they're saying now, if you're going to take selfies, just duck face alone. Otherwise... Um, or wear just, a helmet. Yeah, otherwise wear a helmet. Or a hairnet. Or a head sock. I'm going to make a new thing called the head sock, and it's basically... Um, <laughs> the selfie head, head it's, sock. It's the selfie head sock, and it's basically a balaclava with your uh, like a wig on it, mm. and uh, you cut your face out, so you still have your face and what your hair looks like, but you can't get nits because you've got the selfie head sock on. Or could you just take individual pictures and then pick stitch them together and then be like, we're totally here together? <laughs> that does not sound <laughs> as easy as wearing a head sock. <laughs> it's, so, <laughs> it's so weird how um, selfies have become a thing. Yeah. But you know how people used to look back through like a photo album and it'd be all photos of like your family and fun times and holidays and stuff like that? Yeah. And it's always like a couple of people in a photo. Now, if you did the same thing but put people's... Um, photos from now on, into a photo album. It would just be this psychotic book of tons of close-ups of people's faces. Yeah. Have you noticed though that since selfies became a trend, that the general public have got prettier because they're taking <laughs> photos of themselves all <laughs> the time? Interesting theorem. Yeah, interesting. Is it like? I've, Do you I've reckon I've people have become prettier? I, I think that people have gotten prettier since selfies have been a thing because people make more of an effort. I mean, what if they? Are, oh, I'm going to lunch with my friend. <laughs> Oh, we'll have to take a selfie that we went to lunch with our lunch in it. So you have to make sure you look good in the selfie. And lunches now look better as well. That's a very interesting theorem. Okay. Yeah, see? It's, um, <laughs> People are making good-looking lunches so they get Instagram. Sky, Sharon and Clint. On the edge. Hi, I love you, and I bought you this sweet treadmill. I hate you and I'm leaving you. What am I doing wrong? Shares Dogs Love Shack. Love. Oh! The segment on the show where Sharon, the only wiped up, well, married one on the show, <laughs> wiped up, uh, Holla. doles out some relationship advice and uh, based on her many years of both maintaining a, a successful relationship and being a bit of a psychopath at the same time. Damn straight I was a psychopath and now I'm living the wife life and I'm doing some landscaping at home and guys, it's really full on. <laughs> I've got our first caller on the line now. Joanna, how can I help you in the love shack today? Hey, Shares Dog, definitely need some help. <laughs> um, okay, so I've been seeing this guy for a little while, I've been on a few dates and I really like him. Mm-hmm. And uh, I've been trying to play my usual game, trying to, you know, play hard to get. But the thing is, when he calls me, he seems all keen, but he calls me once a week. And whenever he's texting, he seems really vague and uninterested. And I'm like, okay, it's really hard to play, like, hard to get with a guy who doesn't seem like he wants to get you a lot. So wow. I'm like, do I keep playing hard to get or do I just lay my cards on the table? Well, it kind of seems like you guys are both playing hard to get with each other yeah. because exactly. you're playing hard to get. And I remember saying this to my uh, to my husband when we were dating because the first time we dated, I was an absolute puppy dog and the second time I played hard to get. And he yeah. said to me at one point, he goes, I honestly don't know what to do here because you're playing hard to get so much that I don't know if you actually like me yeah. or not. So now I'm playing hard to get with you. So what's yeah, going exactly. on? Yeah, exactly. Situation I'm in. So do I stay? Okay, look. Because one of us obviously has to give in. 
But yeah. I don't want to be the one to give in. I reckon just if you like him and you know that he likes you, then just maybe take the hard to get down down a notch. You can call him as well. Your phone's not only capable of receiving calls. So you can That's make the true. phone call as well. If he's only calling you once a week, why don't you call him once a week? Because it's going to get to a point where the boy's going to get sick of chasing you. Guys like to be yes. chased as well. That's don't what they? I'm afraid of. Oh, well, you should just just take the hard to get down a notch. But I'll ask Clint as well because Clint's a boy. What do you think? No, I think you're right. I think you think you're right. He probably he's either playing hard to get or he's just a useless boy who's like, oh, yeah, I should text that girl again. <laughs> so if you put yourself top of mind and just get your name on his on his mind. That's yep. probably going to go a long way towards it as well. Just flip him a text every now and then. A All right, I will. I'll call him right now. Yeah, give him oh, a call. Good yeah. luck. A call's a good idea. Go for it. But just call. Good. I will. Think of a reason to call. Don't just be yeah. calling to say hi or to see what he's doing. Call him and ask him out. Ask him out. Good okay, luck. Okay, I will. Good, good luck, Joanna. Let us know how Thank you get you. on, okay? All right. Yes. Okay. One down, guys. I hate hard to get. <laughs> It seems like every woman in New Zealand is playing hard to get with me. There's a, there's Come a, on, guys. Some of you be easy to get, please. There's a, there's a difference between hard to get and avoiding you. Uh, okay. <laughs> the love shack is open. Hi. I love you, and I bought you this sweet treadmill. I hate you, and I'm leaving you. What am I doing wrong? Shares Dogs Love Shack. Love. Ow! Lay some more sweet, sweet love advice on us, Chess Dog. I'll try my best. I'm replying to all the texts that come through, so you can call us on 0800 The Edge or you can text us to 3343 James. Yours is very complicated, so please explain it to me in the simplest way possible. Okay, so I was at this party, right? Mm -hmm. And I got really trashed, and um, my ex-boyfriend was there, and he's got a new boyfriend, and I kind of... um, I kind of got with my boyfriend yeah. and his current boyfriend found out and now his current boyfriend is trying to get with me to get back at my ex and my ex has no idea. <laughs> okay, does your ex-boyfriend know that his current boyfriend wants to hook up with you? No, he doesn't. <laughs> Oh, that's awkward. I would. Do, who who is your alliance better with? Like, are you? Do you get on better with the ex boyfriend or the new boyfriend? Neither at the moment. I would to <laughs> honestly just tell the tell the boyfriend that you're not interested in getting caught up in their politics and just step away from the situation completely. But it sounds like they're very unhappy. So either way, whatever happens, you've totally won the breakup. Okay. <laughs> it's weird though. Like you can take you can step back now and go. I don't want anything to do with this. But you're already. Way into so, it already. Does your ex boyfriend does he not even know that his boyfriend knows he cheated on him? No, he doesn't. He's kind of fake. You oh did, my god! If you guys it was are... me, if it was me, I would probably just give the ex boyfriend hands up and go. Just so you know, your boyfriend knows and is now trying to get with me. So you guys sort your stuff out. <laughs> That's what well, I I'm would do. I'm gonna feel really bad if I like f up their relationship. Even though. Oh I my god, worried. James! Don't even lie to me about it. If you felt bad about breaking <laughs> up their relationship, you wouldn't have got with his boyfriend when you knew he had a boyfriend. Okay. <laughs> okay, maybe you're right. Maybe you're right. You're kind of right. Yeah, so go and tell the boy, the ex, your ex-boyfriend to sort out his own backyard because it's too much for you. Don't say backyard. Oh, you know what I mean. Don't make yeah, it gross. <laughs> yeah. Go and tell him, to t- just tell him what's going on and get him to sort it out because it's not your drama. You're not the one with the boyfriend. This is awesome. It's like a gay Melrose place. <laughs> Honestly, that guy should get a reality show. I yeah. would watch that. The text machine is blowing up. As always. Sharon, how do I tell, how do you tell if your boy, if, how do I tell if my boyfriend is as serious as I am? This is a real hard one because I'm I, I'm pro never nagging somebody to get engaged to you because I've, I've had so many friends that have given their boyfriends like the hints. the ultimatum and they drop heaps of hints and yeah. stuff. Yeah, yeah. And um, my boy my husband now he said to me he's like, don't ever nag me to get engaged. He was like, I love you and I want to be with you forever, but this is the only the one thing that I can control. Oh so, wow! So, so it's the and it is it's the only thing that a boy can control is when you know you get engaged. So don't nag the engaged thing. Just maybe I don't know. Just make little jokes, and if he but- makes the jokes back, <laughs> then it's looking good. If he doesn't make the jokes, jokes with you, then it's not going down. Otherwise, if you have that sort of relationship where you can sit down and have that serious talk, think about a way to do it without sounding like an absolute serious psycho. But, uh, no, no, because if your boyfriend uh, says, "I oh, give me the time to get engaged and don't nag me about it, mm-hmm. that means that's like a guarantee that he is going to do it, just give me time. That's like a really nice thing he said to you. Or what if he doesn't? Off. 
<laughs> or it's a what? <laughs> or it's a fob off. Yeah, yeah, like. But, but what if he doesn't say that to you? If he doesn't say that to you, then you've either got to grow up here and be prepared for possibly hearing something you don't want to hear, or you can just kind of bring it up in a funny way. That was a really good answer because Clint's answer to that question was, how do I tell if he's serious as I am? Clint's answer was, have a staring competition. <laughs> <laughs> so he loves food. That's no. why Sharon's in charge of it, and that's why that is Shaz Dog's Love Shack. Thank you for joining in. We'll do it again next week. Good guy, Sharon and Clint. On the bloody edge. I got a phone call this morning, and I now know exactly where Guy is in the Best in the Box Awards for Sexiest Man on TV. Yes, not most sexist, sexiest. Sexiest most, man. Yeah. Most sexiest. And I'm going to let you know right now after a drum roll where you are placed. <laughs> You are first equal Wow! with Ben Mitchell, who plays TK on Shortland Street. I've got to win this so bad. Everyone, please vote for me right now. How the hell did that happen? Best I, I don't know. on the box dot co dot NZ. <laughs> Just um, Google search TV Guide Awards. Best on the box dot co dot NZ. <laughs> Just vote for me. Just You only need to vote once. Just vote for Six Years Man and that's all. And Guy Williams is my name. How are you going to beat Ben Mitchell I from Shortland Street? I need to win this Street. so bad. Let's call him up and give him some crap. Let's give him some... Give him hell. Have you got his number? Call him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Clint's got it. All right, here we go. Sort it out. Rachel speaking. Hi, Rachel. It's Guy Williams here. I'm here to talk to uh, TK from your Shortland nemesis. Street. Your nemesis. Are you here to talk to your nemesis? That's right. That yes. is right. All right. All right. Hang on a second. I will find the very big, buff, muscular Ben Mitchell, and he can have a chat to you. <laughs> Game on. Hang on a second. <laughs> <laughs> Guy Williams. Guy. TK, it's Guy Williams here. How are you, brother? What are you hiding, bro? <laughs> Secrets, brother. I've he- I've heard Definite you. N- knowledge. I- I've been doing a bit of research on you, TK from Shortland Street, and I've found out some real dirt. I've- TK's not even your the real name. Room. Your real name is Ben Mitchell. What are you hiding, bro? <laughs> uh, you found me. Are you even a real doctor, brother? I save lives and break hearts. <laughs> so I guess uh, I guess you, you could, you know. Because you could say that. Now, this is an attempt at smack talk from Guy to you, Ben, because uh, you guys are at the moment tied for first place in Six Years Man on the box in the Best of oh, the Box rigged. Awards. It's rigged. It's rigged. <laughs> do, do you want to talk some smack back to Guy? <laughs> do prepare you... yourself, brother. Prepare yourself. Do, does, do you even know who yeah, I am? Pretender, not a contender. Oh! <laughs> You got burned. Bring it on, like. There's a challenge. Oh. <laughs> Br- bring it on, like Donkey Kong. Do you even know who I? Do you, do you even know who I am? The radio guy. The radio guy. <laughs> he has absolutely no. Well, let me. I've got the body of a gladiator. There, you, there, you go. there we go. The photo's up. <laughs> He's googling you. He's googling to see who you are. So we've got someone that's stacked with muscles up against a real tall, nerdy-looking <laughs> Clark Kent guy. <laughs> I'll have you know that under this nerdy exterior, I am shredded, mate. I've been going to the gym a lot. I know. Looks at deceiving. It hasn't been. <laughs> <laughs> I know. That's one thing you learn about cameras. TK, how how many times have you won this competition? I lost count. <laughs> <laughs> you know. <laughs> I almost put it to them, proposed that they should have another category for me. They should. They like should. Other people compete in then it's just me. <laughs> they should call it the Ben Mitchell Award. I, I, I thought that too, and then kind of resigned the title to and just call it the Ben Mitchell title. Yeah, they should. It's, you've won it too many times now, babes. Ben, you're too cocky, mate. This year, I'm taking your crown. <laughs> I'm shredded, I've got the moves the ladies like, and I'm really... <laughs> what do they like? They like sexy dance moves. <laughs> sexy times. <laughs> and they like a bit of romance. They don't want cocky guys like you, they want underdogs like I me. I don't know if they like romance. <laughs> <laughs> we do, uh, Ben. That's debatable. What do you think they like? I think a bit of confidence helps. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Confidence is key, I think. Yeah, yeah sure. <laughs> Even though secretly you don't know what you're talking about, yeah. you've got to act like you do. Okay. <laughs> Arrogance all the way. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, so far we've voted for Guy. Um, oh, Guy. no, I've changed my mind. I'm voting for Ben now. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I saw him on the TV last night, and he was playing um, the Game Centre, as they call it, on Shorten Street in his undies. And I was like, hell yeah, <laughs> Ben Mitchell's getting my vote. Yeah, they're coming play the undies. The yeah. Shorten Street no, um, non-brand specific Game Centre. Yeah, we need more undies scenes, I think. Yeah, <laughs> I, I think you do too. I think that you and um, Cam Jones, who plays the ambulance guy, Dallas. I know, I always felt a bit weird about undies and um, guys. But you, I, I, I think that you guys should have a pillow fight. 
It would be I, real good. I quite liked it with uh, TK and Harpo having the undie scene. I think, oh, yeah. That's I think, for me. I think new storyline, TK goes gay with that ambulance guy. <laughs> that would really spice <laughs> things up. I put it to them. Yeah. They just thought it could never happen. Oh, yeah. stink. Guys, guys, we've got way off track. We're talking about TK and his undies. We've lost track of what this is really about, which is me beating TK. <laughs> Sorry. TK, you're too cocky, mate, and I'm going to knock you off your post. <laughs> How do you propose to do that? With many sexy words from the ladies and constant <laughs> harassment via the radio <laughs> airwaves. <laughs> ben Mitchell, you're a good man. Good luck to you in the uh, Thank t- you, brother. The, awesome the sexiest you. man on the box competition. It's, it's, ridic- it's ridiculous. No, if, you, <laughs> if you want to see Ben in his undies, Shorten Street tonight, TV2, 7 o'clock. <laughs> okay, guys. Hey, t- TK, just before you go, if I beat you, how embarrassing would that be for you? <laughs> <laughs> Would it be the lowest point of your career? I'm glad I don't know who you are now. <laughs> because I would have asked, who is he? And then had a look, I went, oh. now this is really f***ing rigged, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're amazing. Uh, Thank you so much, Ben. Stay uh, good looking, love you guys. Love you guys. Keep See, up the good work. Good luck, bro. <laughs> oh, man, choice. <laughs> <laughs> Guy Sharon and Clint. Itch. I found out today that Clint has a broken tooth. Now there's a little bit of a there's a little bit of a story behind this little chip in his front tooth, isn't there, Clint? Well it's not a little chip. Seventy percent of the tooth is fake. <laughs> <laughs> so that one there is not a real tooth. Gross. I always wonder why it was, why you had a line across there. Yeah. I thought that you must have like drunk juice and um, you f- held it in a funny place so that it only coloured a part of your like tooth. a stain. Yeah, no, no, it's half of it's fake. Wow. So, Clint, this it's happened. My only cosmetic surgery. This, the, this so far <laughs> until I get my boob job. <laughs> your, your tooth may have been able to be saved. If you were very silly, start the story at the beginning. You were on the dance floor, I believe? Uh, it was a house party in Rotorua. Okay, hang on. Uh, best place for any good story to start. And we're doing some sick dancing. Yeah. And I've got a friend called Dan who um, has got some pretty vigorous um, arm and elbow movements when he dances. It's kind of like the running man with your arms but not actually moving. Yeah, going outwards. And I was like, oh! Oh, this is so sick, such good partying. Um, and he threw an elbow up, which caught a beer bottle, and it um, smashed my tooth in half. Whoa. And did you carry on partying after that? I put the tooth in my pocket. I was like, save that. I've always heard you could save that. Um, and you should drink some milk is what I heard as well. Turns out you meant to put the tooth in milk and go straight to the hospital. Um, oh. I drank some milk, put the tooth in my pocket, and um, carried on having a real good time with my pals. <laughs> What an Part, idiot. Party, partied on through. <laughs> with, in, in hindsight, and with the maturity that I have these days, I now know that I should have gone to A&E. Yeah. Um, You've learnt. Yeah. With wisdom. But yeah. you're not the only person that does this. This happens all the time. And that's why we want to hear from you this afternoon on 0800 The Edge or text us to 3343. <laughs> what have you partied through? And to kick it off, we've got possibly one of the best stories ever. Hello, Ali. Well, I decided to cook a poached egg for my boyfriend at the time. Yes, nice. And I took it out of the microwave and checked it, and it wasn't quite done, so I put it back in, pulled it out 20 seconds later, and it literally exploded in my face. Ouch! Um, It burnt my chest, my face, um, and it burnt three layers of my cornea. What? What? Like in my eyeball. The egg was cooking in my eyeball. (laughs) Yuck. And then you went back to the party. Um, Well, no, there was a party on that night and like I decided I'm going to just be a trooper and still go out. Ellie, did did you go to hospital? Yeah, I was, I was. Yeah, I went to hospital. Um, I was in A and E for about three hours with my face in water. Did you um? Did you go to the party with an eye patch on? I did. Oh, that's pretty sick. I can <laughs> see awesome. why you. That um, would have been the life of the party. Yeah, yeah. I was blind for yeah. four days, so that was. <laughs> yeah. Damn, Ellie. And now, are you any better at cooking poached eggs? You put the glad wrap over the cup now. Or what do you do? The funny thing is, is I actually don't eat eggs. I never really had before <laughs> then. <laughs> I was just trying to impress my new boyfriend at the time. Well, I hope it was worth. In the end, thanks for your call, Ali. <laughs> Amazing. Well, you got to beat that one, Mel. What did you party through? I uh, went to the old Metro nightclub back in the days when I was really young. Yeah. And um, now you're still really to... young, babe. We still think you're real young. Yeah, yeah, not bad for forty two. Still yeah. get asked for <laughs> not, ID. Not bad still at all. Asked, still get asked for bloody ID. Yeah, yeah girl. Still swearing. Um, and I, the song "All She Wants." From Ace the Bass came on, and I love that song. Here's back another the day. baby. She's gone tomorrow. Is that the song? Ah, uh, is that the, the, yeah? Yeah, carry on. That was yeah, it. and I um, 
Woohoo! And I was so excited, I ran onto the dance floor and I slipped on some alcohol and Ooh. I really hurt myself. Like I was in so much pain, but I just thought, stuff this, get up. Get up, keep going. And what did you what did you done to yourself? I broke my ankle. Oh, wow. Mel. Yeah. You're crazy. I don't know how you carried on that one either, but now you're still getting down I'm to some... I'm a brave girl, eh? Yeah. You sure are. You yeah, sure Mel, are, you Mel. Are, if not a little bit silly, but yeah, brave. Yeah, very, very oh, good. Thanks for I'm, call- I'm tough. <laughs> You're tough as old okay, boots, Mel. All Thanks right, for mate. your call. Yes, Christine, tell us about your story. <laughs> Well, I had I smashed my front teeth out when I was about twelve, and the porcelain caps would pop out every now and then. And um, one night I was going to um, wanting to go to the pub, and my tooth broke out when I was having dinner. And the dentist don't think that's an emergency, so I super glued it back in myself. <laughs> what? Oh, okay. How did you not poison yourself by putting super glue in your mouth? Um, I just did it very carefully. Yeah. Wasn't, I did it a couple of times. Blow on it a lot, eh, and don't get your tongue stuck to it. Imagine, yeah. if, you, imagine if you'd got your tongue stuck and you'd be like, hey, I'm Christine, <laughs> all the time. Oh, that'd be horrible. How, what's wrong with your tongue? Oh, for a really long story. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for your call, Christine. <laughs> Stacey, tell us about your uh, thing that you partied on through. Stacey! Oh, see you, Stacey. Thanks for your call anyway, babes. <laughs> <laughs> Kristen, what did you party through? Uh, well, there was two of us. There was me and my cousin at a party, and we decided that it would be a good idea to jump off the roof into the pool. And um, he kind of slipped and broke his arm in three places, and then oh. I landed funny in the pool and dislocated my shoulder. Oh! And you guys continued to, p- to party after that? Yeah, we kind of had the beer blanket on, so it didn't really hurt that much at the time. Oh, we can't we can't be seen to be condoning this on the radio, Kristen. So, first of all, that's not a good idea. Second of all, <laughs> you guys would have looked like you were deformed at the party. Just two mates who'd become friends because you both had these weird, <laughs> <laughs> weird parts of your bodies that didn't work. Uh, well, we were cousins, so... We knew each other before the party, I guess. <laughs> oh, that, that's, that's lucky. Thanks, Christian. And Blair, yours isn't about you, but yours is about a friend. Now, you are allowed to give this friend a fake name. What did he party through? I'll give him his real name just in case he's listening. <laughs> <laughs> What's his name, Blair? Uh, his name's Dion Spice. He's actually from Hamilton, Good. so there's an excuse there, I guess. <laughs> first I name, love this. First name, last name, and location. Good yeah. start. And um, what did Dion... He's single as well, so if you stalk him... Yeah, it's good. Um, <laughs> I love you. This now, Dion, what did Dion tender, Spice mate. do, Blair? Uh, oh, when he has a few beers, he gets real excited, and he, it's a decent party, and he was dancing and ran up to some random dudes that we didn't know, and was like, get on the D floor, was real into it. And then one of the guys, like, kicked him, knocked him out straight away. Oh. He um, lying there, woke up, calls me over, and then goes, man, I've got I've to go to the car. And I was like, what, what, what's wrong? Are you all right? And then he's like, no, I've shat myself. And he just, <laughs> like, sh- lifted up his shorts, uh, lifted up his shirt, and just all up his back with oh, shit everywhere. Oh, oh I'm sorry. <laughs> please, please don't... I'll, I'll watch that language. Please don't tell me he went back to the party. Uh, he shot down to the old car down the driveway, grabbed some other clothes, it stole my T-shirt, I was sober driving, stole my T-shirt, I had to put some scummy little singlet on. <laughs> And he went back, wiped it up with his dirty clothes, and went back to the party. Oh, that is amazing. No, that's disgusting. Don't applaud oh, that. Mate. That is the funniest thing. But you, but you know what? That's not that uncommon. There's a girl that works for our company that wets herself when she's been drinking. Like, no, she, no, 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 no. This, that said, is... We, said, we weren't... After, no, I'm not condoning it, but that she parties on through after she that, herself. After that, there can be no more... <laughs> That is a new low for civilization. <laughs> it's a new low for this show, at least. Guys, Sharon and Clint. Itch. Is there anyone where you ever think, man, I'm glad that's not my father? Who's your worst nightmare dad? Graham Henry. Our, yeah. boss, our boss, Leon. <laughs> Saddam Hussein. Oh, yeah. Well, well on, on, that, on the list of people you would hate to have as your dad, at the top, somewhere near the top, needs to be uh, Paul Henry. He was on his show last night outing his daughter's boyfriend on national television for no real reason other than to get a laugh and to annoy his daughter. How embarrassing. Check it out. My middle daughter Sophie has recently started dating a model slash actor. His name is Randall. 
which is nice. But she's strangely reluctant to introduce me to him. Now, to be fair, she is strangely reluctant to introduce me to all of her boyfriends. She hasn't counted on the power of television, because I've found out what Randall looks like. And now you will too. May I present my daughter's new boyfriend, Randall. <laughs> What was going on here is it's a weird video of Randall um, being a male model on a farmer's catalogue ad. Oh, so <laughs> embarrassing. <laughs> There's a that's video of him walking around with a shirt unbuttoned, I think. That's more embarrassing than the time I introduced my dad to a boyfriend and my dad just looked at him and goes, huh, and looked back at the TV. I was mortified. I am so glad that my dad never had a TV show. The weird <laughs> the weird bit about this is that's Paul, that's Paul Henry from the Paul Henry show last night. Guy just revealed to us before that he's just been asked out on a date by Paul Henry's daughter. <laughs> Which one? <laughs> um, uh, the one we had in on the studio. Oh, Bella, the one from Bella. Beauty and the Geek. Me and Bella are going to get married. Are I've, you, I've fallen oh in my love. God. Are you, I've fallen in love, guys. Are you not wa- warned off that now after that last clip? Are you worried about what Paul Henry will do? <laughs> no, because Guy Williams is down for any PR he can get. <laughs> I just, could you imagine if you went out with Paul Henry's daughter? A sitting, Nightmare situation. Sitting at Nightmare the table. situation. Could Paul, not be any worse. Paul Henry would be like, um, there's only room for one broadcaster at this table, so get off my table, young man. No, because I actually started, the, well, the first thing I ever did on television was appear on Paul Henry's sh- show as a pro whaling advocate mm. he's still not a big fan of me as you can no. imagine <laughs> slash he kind of hates my guts. guy Sharon and Clint on the edge we're opening up the celebrity hookup hotline there's a lot of times when I have to ask myself is this a good idea and this is one of those ones where I'm like this is a bit weird Turn your, talk yourself up, mate. We're getting Calling some yourself weird... a celeb? No, 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 not for that reason. <laughs> Wait, what, what? Oh, what? I thought you were saying girls trying to hook up with you, and you're like, this is a good idea. No, no, no one's trying to hook oh. up with me. What are you talking about? <laughs> that was uncomfortable. I, I'm saying Sorry, we're doing... I misread what you said. I'm saying what we're doing here is a um, celebrity hookup line, and it has already gotten real weird, you guys. In what way? Someone... I, I don't even want to say it. I don't want to say it. Let's get, let's get on with the segment. We've had some pretty funny texts come in. Someone's hooked up with Ben Lummis in their single days. Oh, yeah. I'm sure, he's, I'm sure he's some people... He's a, he was a stud back in the day. <laughs> My, you either got your pick, Michael Murphy, or you got Ben Lummis. It's, That's it's, A-class New Zealand right there, It's a weird one eh? to brag about, but yeah, it would have happened. <laughs> well, this all comes off the back of Margot Robbie from the Wolf of Wall Street, who's in New Zealand at the moment. She is filming a movie here, and she's hooked up with one of the art people on that's been doing all the sets and stuff mm. on the movie. Doing all the what on the, on the movie? Doing all the art. Oh, do you say sets or? Sets, Oh, yeah. sets. Oh, okay, yeah. Good. And he has uh, put a picture on Facebook today and all his friends have commented on it saying, does this mean they're official? Are you guys official now? Blah, blah, blah. I asked one of his friends if it was true they were going out and he said, yes, they've been together just over a month, but they've been trying to Shit. keep it quiet. Nobody knows what's going to happen when she goes back overseas, but he is definitely passionate Margot Robbie. All right, let's open the um, let's open what the celebrity hookup hotline is that yes, what it's called? And we can make this anonymous as well, okay? So you don't have to worry about us exposing you. But Jared, your brother hooked up with a pretty big celebrity. Who was it? <laughs> your brother hooked up with Anna Paquin. Yeah, that's pretty badass. Please, yeah. please tell me it was during the um, True Blood days and not during the Flyaway Home days. No, it was definitely Flyaway Home days. Oh, <laughs> so he, he had like a playground pash. No, oh, well, kind of. So it was like a school social. And I think he must have been like 14 or 15 at the time. Yeah. And Wait. Anna Paquin's mum was a teacher at our school. And I don't know how it happened, but... um. Yeah, they somehow got together. Wow! During the flyaway well, home days. Good on you. <laughs> Those are good days. At, at least, at least he got in there and he can say that he did. That's not the first person I've heard that's hooked up with Anna Paquin. I've got a friend that hooked up with Anna. Oh, Paquin. you talking Matt? Yeah, <laughs> we're not supposed to expose it, but uh, but feel... he did a little bit more than Pash. Okay, look, this is the situation we're in right now. We have on the phone. We just need to go and talk to this person first, but we have on the phone someone who has a superstar story to talk about. This oh. is like this is like celebrity hookup. Gold. If we were the Women's Weekly, this would be our front page story. <laughs> this could also break up an engagement because we found out that this happened while this person had a girlfriend. Oh, do we want to break up an engagement? Can I say what? We bandit- don't want to break it up, but it, it could if she found out about it. Can I say what Bandit involves? No. Yeah. No. Do. Yeah. Do. No. No. no One do. Direction. Uh, <laughs> said it. Um. We have opened up the celebrity hookup 
hotline where you get to dob in your friends or tell us the stories about that time you hooked up with a celebrity. It's pretty bleak. We've had people text in um, Jesse Ryder and Sam Wallace, the same person. <laughs> oh, the same God. Person. Chris Warner, Timuera Morrison. These are shocking. Oh, Someone, the Timuera Morrison story is good. Read that out. Some dude wrote it. Oh, um, oh Tim Morrison. Oh, yeah, yeah sorry. Um, I hooked up with Tim Morrison just after Once Were Warriors. That's, <laughs> that's, awesome. that's him in his prime. Yeah. I hadn't figured out that I wasn't his girlfriend until I realised he only saw me on Tuesdays after I met his Thursday fling and his co-star from Shorty Street <laughs> and announced they were an item in the girly mags. He's a rock star back in the day. He was a massive rock yeah. star. Some, some dude texts in, does getting a hand job from Guy <laughs> Williams count? <laughs> Can I just say that it's totally a lie? Okay. It's totally a lie. We have got to make this phone call now. To oh, yeah. The, this is the One Direction story that oh, we're talking about. Oh, man. So someone has texted us a phone number, right? Yes, it is her friend has dobbed in her friend Brittany, and we're going to ring and ambush her and get this story about her and a member from One Direction. Hello, Brittany speaking. Hello, Brittany. It's Guy Sharon and Clinton here from The Edge. How are you? Hi, I'm good, thank you. How are you? We're, we're real good, but we've uh, we've got some information we need to ask you about because one of your friends have dobbed you in. Oh no, what have I done? For the celebrity hookup line. Apparently you went back to Zane from One Direction's <laughs> hotel room. Oh, which one of my friends do I have to blame for this? They didn't tell us who they it was. They didn't tell us who it was. They, they just, just said, text us. They said, this is my friend Brittany, call her. Oh my God. So tell us the story, Brittany. <laughs> Am I on the air right now? Yeah, kind of. <laughs> um, I didn't... Oh, my God. Come on, Brittany. Tell us I'm, the story. Um, okay. Oh, I'm so embarrassed. Don't be um, embarrassed. Well, <laughs> be proud. Well, You're the greatest New Zealander who's ever lived. <laughs> Not really, but okay. Um, so it was back when they came... When The first time they came and they did their concert at the Trust Stadium. Yeah. And um, by chance, we managed to get really good tickets into the second row and all of that kind of stuff. So throughout the concert, we were getting eyed up and we weren't sure if it was just we were overthinking it or what. And then um, after the concert, one of the security guards came up to my friend Julia and said, oh, what's your name? What's your number? Zane thought you were really good looking and wants to like see you a bit later on. And wow. Then, <laughs> and then so we got this text. Well, she got this text on her phone from the security guard, and it was Zane. And he said, hey, babe, hope you enjoyed the concert. You're, you and your friends are, like, more than welcome to come back to our hotel afterwards. <sighs> Ooh! And what, <coughs> what happened when you got there? So we were going, like, that way, and then we get halfway there, and then all of a sudden we find out that the security guard got the wrong girl. <laughs> oh, so after all that, you didn't get to hook up with Zane. Oh, no, 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 no. He <laughs> asked the wrong girl in our group for the number. It was supposed to be me that he asked. Oh, oh yeah. right. Okay, all right. So, so long story short, did you or did you not spend the night at the Langham with Zane from One Direction? I did not spend the night. But, but you did hook up with him? I did get to go into the hotel room and hook up with Zane. <laughs> <laughs> was, he, was he a good kisser? I, yeah, probably the best. Oh, that is amazing. <laughs> and I, and I the have best to, in the world. I have to ask the big question. Was he going out with Perry Edwards at this time? Well, I don't know. Apparently they were going out before that. And then afterwards, those pictures of them first, like, you know, those first pictures that came out of him yeah. and her on a scooter or something. That was like a couple of weeks afterwards. Oh. My. So it's all a bit misty. And then he tweeted after I left his hotel room. Um, persistent pays off or something. <laughs> we, we oh not, my definitely God. about you. Definitely about we, you. Definitely about you. Were you not yeah. disappointed there was no romance in this situation? Um, no. Well, he, was actually, he was actually really nice. Like, I got up there and he was like, oh, do you want a drink? Like, I won this chocolate. Do you want some chocolate? <laughs> And I was like, no, I'm fine. Like, he's like offering you all this stuff, and he's like, let's get this done. <laughs> all right, Brittany. Yeah. Hey, thank you. Yeah, for your... and then he's like, um, do you want a cigarette? I was like, no, no, I'm fine. <laughs> and then this whole time, I can just hear these like girls outside the hotel like screaming. Oh, oh God. And... Wow. Well, yeah. well, thank you for telling us your story, Brittany. Hold the line. We're going to hook you up with a prize, all right? <laughs> sorry for, sorry <laughs> for ambushing you. you. Well, that was a hell of a story, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs>
That is amazing. I also... Uh, so met, romantic. I met someone once that uh, went back to Justin Bieber's hotel room, but mm. that's all she could tell us because she had to sign a confidentiality yeah. agreement. Unbelievable. It's Zayan crazy. needs to get that as well. We're getting a lot of texts at the moment from um, directioners that B-I-T-C-H is a liar. Um, <laughs> oh my God, I'm so effing jealous. All that sort of stuff. So hey, well, I'm jealous. Thanks for your text. We welcome them anytime. <laughs> Guy Sharon and Clint. It's that's, that's the end of the podcast. Um, the And it's coming at the right time because things are just breaking in the studio. <laughs> We've had to transfer a guy to three different microphones. If you think the edge is flash, kind of is. Half flash, half nothing works. The boss's office is flash. No, it's ba- that sucks it's too. He's got actually, the crappiest office. It's basically a wank fest because it looks real flash, but nothing works. It's better than John and Ben at 10 where no shit we work in a former brothel. <laughs> it was a brothel TV. The, it's so bad. The windows don't open and there's a sex dungeon in it. It is disgusting. Have you had sex in the sex dungeon? Cause you no, work with your... I didn't go down there because I'm worried I'm going to get stabbed by the sex people who are down there. But if you, you work with your ex-girlfriend, if you're ever going to have ex sex, can you please do it in the dungeon? My ex-girlfriend has moved on from me about four or five times. <laughs> Oh, we'll do another podcast tomorrow. Bye. The Guy Shannon and Clint Podcast.